people with warm regard at the as the contact points being experts isn't necessarily that crucial as the first contact but people with warm regard who are wel welcoming that in itself will go miles and miles because people remember how an, an experience makes them feel and if you can if you can um, create that contact point and then from there conduit them into wherever the most appropriate place is, knowing that they've got that contact point to re-establish that warm regard. I think that's crucial. The first contact is crucial. As she was dying in hospital, I, I discovered paperwork in her medical records. Somebody put in to not refer to her as her chosen name and to n not use the appropriate pronouns. And I know for her, that was a big part of why she kind of neglected to seek additional care for, for cancer. This, the standard of suicide rate in the general community is 8% for cisgendered people. And for trans people, it's like 48%. So <clears throat> there's something wrong in our whole society, in our medical system. It has to be changed. And people die. People die every day because of this. I'm really glad to see that uh, we have uh, funding for at least four assessors per health authority region. I don't know how feasible that is in practice. Um, I hope it is. It'll be good to see a permanent organization set up here, which will look after the future needs of future generations. Uh, I'll be happy to see it. I probably won't live long enough to see it, but you know, that's the way it is. We seem to be on the right track. In this context, it means someone, uh, it means self-identifying someone that sees themselves on the trans spectrum and then creating resources, healthcare delivery models that um, can set the bar Ideally, in my opinion, to the most marginalized, the most fragile, the most traumatized. Because frankly, people that are well adjusted already, that happen to be trans as well, whatever that is, they're going to be fine. They have well adjusted, they've got jobs, they can access the psychologist who will transition them quite quickly uh, based on whatever their issues are. But if you set the bar to the most marginalized, the most vulnerable, and more particularly the, mo the, the most traumatized, if you can set the bar there, then you'll be able to include everyone. To me, trans inclusion means using the proper gender pronouns, um, finding out how the person wants to be addressed by clinic staff, the receptionist. Um, it even goes down to a, a blue folder or a pink folder. I mean, if a person's presenting as a woman, probably go for the she and the her, yeah. But there's the, the biggest growing group gender-wise these days is gender fluid, um, gender neutral, um, and that's the youth. Um, my doctor, I've transitioned three years ago, but when I went to get my gender papers signed by her, I said, so what are my records in? Are they male or female? Three years later after I transitioned after work, they were still male. I said, so can we change this now? I'll have to confirm that, she said. So, inclusiveness, it's, it's a process. To me personally, it means people who, um, well, I suppose I, it's based on my own experience. Uh, as a childhood transsexual, uh, long before the word was even understood and known. I was born in 1925. By 1927, I can remember showing manifestations of gender confusion with my parents and so forth. Didn't want my hair cutting short. I wanted it like the big girls. Uh, I uh, didn't want to wear pants. I wanted to wear a dress. And all that, and of course, it caused a lot of consternation in 1927, believe me, when there was no knowledge of any of this stuff at all. And uh, anyhow, uh, I, under heavy threat from my father, 
I managed to, it didn't kill it, what he did, he drove it internal, it, it, it became an internalized thing. And uh, from then on, and for the next, uh, pretty much the next 60 years, okay. it was a secret. Okay. I never told anybody about it, I lived with it. Uh, it was extremely intense at times. Uh, and I was uh, so pleased when I eventually summed up the courage to really uh, step out of my shell and let the world know that I was who I am. We're the only group that I know of in NBC uh, that's specifically for trans youth, and so it would be amazing to have more groups around the province. I think at this point trans people haven't really been seen as people that are going to start families in that way and have babies and uh, uh, I think it would be really important to talk to uh, people about their options when they're looking at transitioning. Um, so like for a trans man or on that spectrum uh, talking about uh, freezing eggs or maybe holding off on a hysterectomy because you can actually go on testosterone and then go off and have a baby. Um, I know because I did it. And um, uh, another thing is chest feeding and breastfeeding. Uh, there's actually different surgeries that can allow for some chest feeding after surgery. Um, and so if surgeons and people were to be more educated about that, they could tell people their options beforehand so people could um, just be thinking about that. I think when they're transitioning, it's uh, especially young people, I think they might not be thinking about that part of their life, um, uh, but they might be later in the future. And just to have people be mindful of that, and I think it's really important. feel really positive about what PHSA is doing. Um, I think that it's a really positive move and a really practical move to, to now usher the work that's been done to date by VCH into a broader arena, which I see PHSA, uh, Provincial Health Services as being. I think uh, I'm, I'm really excited about what's happening here today and that it's, um, the, the, the call out has been so widespread.